Today's interview is going to be with an RV, which is about as different as you could possibly get from mine. I Hi everyone, I'm Todd. I'm out here at the Trona Pinnacles. Been out here for 12 days now. These are all my opinions and experiences. This is my trailer. I bought it myself. Not sponsored by anybody. <laughs> panels I put on top 400 watts I've been doing all my water boiling with the electric tea kettle voila hot water <laughs> some broccoli going but I think it's dust everywhere when these things come through so if you want to try and fry something it gets pretty challenging but uh, what I got going here makes it a lot simpler have a look vehicle was that a critical piece in your decision of the trailer yeah actually that influenced it a lot because you know I already had the 4x4 Toyota so you know my 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 tendency was to 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 uh, go towards a an off-road trailer or something capable of, of that mm -hmm. and, and, you know so I was looking at those type of trailers in particular and and, but not really limiting to that because I was looking at, at you know the vestibule for example and, and also the scamp mm -hmm. and, and I think maybe the casita yeah but, uh, uh, yeah I, I was I was open-minded about those those other things because I I don't know how 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 venturous I will get on off-road conditions you know <laughs> yeah well the more you know what the ground clearance is in the Toyota Tacoma uh, I think I've I've got around. It's I'm guessing 14 inches. Oh wow! Uh, Did you jack yours up? No, but I, I'm gonna lift it here. But no, it's stock right now. But it's uh, it's it's a four by four. So okay, let me uh, just see if I can find that. Uh, yeah, I'd have to look it up. I, I really don't know. I'm I'm just guessing. Uh, ground clearance. Uh, let me just see. I got it here. Up nine point four. Nine point four. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it was way over us. Yeah. Yeah, 9.4. Okay, Matt, your trailer's got 21 inches, so you're going to have to, uh, to maximize that, you're going to have to work on that. <laughs> Actually, you know, I, I have put bigger tires on it, so it's a, probably a little bit more than that. Okay, so a good. A little bit more tires. When I look at your trailer, it's, um, it's tilted down a little bit, right? Ideally, the tongue should be even, you know, it should be level. 
and yours is tilted yeah. down just a little bit. Not that there's a big problem or anything, but in order to, uh, I, I think I understand why if you put on a lift, you know, like a lifting uh, ball mount that, or like a riser, then in that case, to get it level, then in that case, you wouldn't have functionality on the tailgate, right? Um, yeah, I'm okay on the tailgate right now, and but, but my intention is to lift the truck, you know, there was a suspension. suspension. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Give it a little more travel and a little more ground flares. Got tongue weight on the Tacoma, I think, is 600 pounds. It's, it's really a lot. And the payload on a truck is really a lot more than on a passenger vehicle. Up back, I can only have a 200 pound tongue weight, which is exactly what my uh, vehicle uh, can accept. So something like mine probably would be, you know, on the, on the high end for, for your type of vehicle, because the tongue weight is kind of heavy with that. Up front and all that. If you have the uh, spare tire option mounted up front, that's a chunk of weight too added onto that, right? Right. Yeah. So you know you might want to, you know, if you're if you're you know concerned about tongue weight, you might want to uh, not opt for that. Whereas I just have a torsion bar kind of a spring type thing. Good. How is your suspension off road on the uh, the trailer? So that that thing, yeah, you, you really don't notice it at all. It's it's uh. Um, just you, you kind of forget about it. It's, it's kind of <laughs> yeah. just it just handles anything. And uh, I didn't really realize it when I bought the trailer. I, I I saw that pretty much anything um, off road was using this suspension. All the different manufacturers. Uh huh. So that kind of had maybe a good feeling. But then when I get the when I went to get the the tow hitch on my truck, I noticed there was a, a, a Timber, they were a Timber dealer. So Timber is, they have a lot of uh, affiliation with uh, tow hitch accessories and stuff and axles like, yeah. and, and all this. So, yeah, you want widely available stuff. You don't want some off brand, that's for sure. Right, yeah. So I'm pretty sure you can get this thing serviced and, and parts. Uh, any trailer place, you know. So they talk to, I, I went on their website. They talk about checking the tow in and tow out, which is uh, something I thought that was probably people are really bouncing these things around, and they may need a uh, attention if you're a real uh, wild man on the trails there. But I, I'm pretty sure you're sane, so yeah. Yeah, I haven't done a whole lot of off, you know, uh, real heavy duty off roading yet. Just a little bit here and there. Well, it's coming. It's coming. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the brakes, 12-inch brakes. I only have 6-inch drum brakes. I wish I had like 9 or 12. Mine assist in stopping. I mean, they, they stop that push. You know, when you stop, um, it'll tend to push you if you don't have trailer brakes. I think a trailer brakes are a necessity for almost, uh, I would recommend them for almost anybody, and, you know, unless you have a really big disc brake. Yeah, if, uh, if I crank up the gain on, on my controller, it, it'll, it'll pull my truck. Wow. It'll, you know, yeah, I have to... Yeah, you know, to be, it's you know, uh, set that appropriately because it stops you. You can just feel it. They're pulling you to a stop, so yeah, I don't want that. You know, I want it to balance it. So they're powerful brakes, yeah, on this trailer. It instills confidence. Yeah, I kind of had in mind, you know, pretty much what I wanted, but they, their website is pretty good as far as uh, building it out and, and checking options and then checking the price and. And, and so, oh, that's too much. And so what do what I really have to have, you know? Yeah. And go back and, and, and just, you know, be exactly what you want to get for it and stuff. So yeah. that was one thing that, that I really liked about the buying process is on the website you had to get a guess and, and then send off for a quarter or something and it kind of turned me off. So yeah. the ease with which I could, you know, just select on things and, and get get an actual price just on the website was yeah that's a big deal really can... yeah, yeah. I'd say one knock is the stove I think this was a it's a nice stove I like it but uh, I think it's intended for indoors like in a van or a RV if it gets windy it, it suffers a little it struggles a little bit so I think uh, it's an outdoor kitchen. And my outdoor shower. So we had this uh, 
going every night. The furnace on top, and the tank has lasted 12 days. It just ran out this morning, so. But I did save propane by using that the electric tea kettle, and that's a killer app. And it's inside. It's been great, nice and warm and cozy in there. Not for a TV or anything. Got my hatchet hung on a magnet on the side there. Put some put some uh, curtains in for privacy. They're blackout curtains. They block everything. Yeah, the refrigerator's been great. This is. Uh, an MT50 display for the solar charge controller. It's dumping 14 amps in right now. Solar panels. Let's go take a look at the solar charge controller. Outdoor shower is working great. So I've been. On fuel mileage, uh, we noted here that, and you gave me the data that uh, you're getting uh, 18 to 19 miles per gallon, typical. That's mixed driving, I assume, uh, with the Toyota Tacoma. Yeah. And with yeah. towing, with a fully loaded trailer, you're getting 13 to 15, uh, and which, yep. is, which is reasonable. That's pretty good. I'm getting uh, 25 to 36. That's uh, round town versus highway, 25 to 36. And uh, I, I probably get in the high... The high third, the, the low, th about 30 miles per gallon, you know, mixed. But towing, I only get 20 to 24, and uh, so yeah, you know, if you're doing a lot of a lot of back and forth across the country, and just a lot of highway miles in general, I mean, that, that's a big advantage there. Yeah. It's a, your dry weight is 1,700 pounds, and uh, mine is 1,330 pounds. That's uh, on the current model. And I weighed mine on a truck scale. I came up to 1,500 pounds, and I put the uh, I used the bathroom scale for the tongue. I, I had somebody help me lift it, and we put it on a bathroom scale. That's how I came up to 200. But uh, any truck stop can weigh these. In my case, I planned on storing it in the garage. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I don't I don't live in a freezing environment, so yeah. I don't have to winterize it here, and so it makes it a little bit nicer, but. Yeah, the trailer is really, really, it's just uh, sheets of aluminum and, and glue, and they really put it together like, you know, indestructible, and with the aluminum uh, welded frame, subframe, it's really sturdy, and it's just one sheet of aluminum over the entire roof, it's just one, one piece of aluminum, so. Yeah, no leaks there, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, so the literature says you can stand on it, and they have steps going up to it. Yeah, yeah, you can walk over, and it's very, you, you don't feel no flex or nothing when you're on the roof. It's, it's really sturdy. As far as getting it in your garage, you have Well, actually, I, I store it off-site, so it's not... I, I was planning on getting it in my garage, and I bought some casters, but, but in the end, it was just going to be too much work. I, I knew, if, I knew, I knew some place where I could store it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just decided to do that. No, it's I, outside, but it's under cover, so it's and it's in a real safe location. Excellent, good, good. Uh, I hope it's not too far away that you can get to it pretty quickly. Uh, no, it's like 15 minutes away, so. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Uh, I have a nine gallon water tank which uh, which you know I just use that for washing dishes um, I see here you've got a 31 gallon water tank do you drink that water or do you carry separate water for drinking uh, no we, we drink that water we have a Berkey filter uh -huh. we pour it in, you know out of the tank into that so we don't have to worry you know we filter the water going into the tank but you never know what you know when you're traveling when you're filling it up what what the water's like, so. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, that's true. Yeah, on the road, you, you can get some pretty funky water. <laughs> Somebody, especially yeah, if you're going yeah, to so the good places that are out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> the Berkey filter, we trust that, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we use that, and, and I figure if we're turning it over, offering up, and 
And if we sanitize it, you know, once a year or so. Yeah. I think. Uh, I sanitize mine with Clorox before every trip. I, I just dose the tank. And I have some other stuff I can use too, which is a little less toxic. And uh, just to uh, keep it going. I mean, when I store it in the winter, I have water in there. I mean, I try and drain every drop out, but there's always some in there. And uh, yeah, always, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it gets a nice uh, bouquet. Let's put it that way. So I. Uh, this trailer has a nice drain feature. You know, they, 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 they set it up really nice where you just remove one panel, panel and, and uh, the valves are all right there. So. Uh, you had no gray water tank. I went for a gray water tank. Uh, some areas require that. You can use a bucket, I think you said you were using? Yeah, we carry a bucket along, and, and uh, you know, if, if, if it's a place where we have to use gray water, I mean, have to be concerned about our gray water, uh, we just kind of use less. And, yeah, and there's and, a lot of solutions to that problem. You just bring it along a little yeah, water I mean, container, and you can store it all if you have to, you know. Um, you know, honestly, out here we're we're not in those kind of locations too much. It's pretty much boondocking, and we're yeah, we're, we're okay with yeah. And I use all uh, biodegradable soap and everything. I mean, I you know, I, right? I, yeah. So I don't, I don't feel bad about it. All. We're not we're not really yeah. You know, we we, 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 we you know make sure we're not throwing out food scraps or nothing. We that's yeah. in the garbage, and it's just a little bit of maybe soapy water here and there. And, and not too much soap either, you know, we try to, you know, use just what soap we need. And I do the same. It's like the last place I camped, you pack out your poop there. I'll tell you, that's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it changes your view of life. I mean, I may do it for now on. It was it actually wasn't so bad, but I use a, uh, uh, well, what are you using for a toilet? So right now we don't have any toilet at all. We just took a bucket along and we had to do that and, and and put a bag in that. And That's what I do too. Yeah. That's exactly what I do. I have a friend who's got a hundred twenty thousand dollar leisure RV, and he uh, he has a wonderful toilet and all this in there. And what he does is he puts a bag in the toilet and uses that. He doesn't want to get the tank dirty. <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, I, I I may get I don't know a toilet, but I, I read and hear about but people who have them and they don't use them, so I don't know. Exactly, I'm with you. I, I the bag is pretty good. Uh, wherever I buy my gas, they get my gift, and uh, that's the way it goes. So it's yeah. uh, it works out pretty good. Um, a little shovel on a shovel, uh, I've done, shovel yeah. on a bucket, you know. I'm with you. Now, if the areas I go to, if it's really boondocking and it's a really, you know, isolated area, I will I will bury the scat. Um, it's just around here where I live. It's so crowded in New Jersey. Uh, we're the most populous state that uh, yeah. if you go to a busy campsite here, it's every weekend, you know. So I give the environment a break, but uh, I'm with you on the bag here. One thing that I thought was really a great feature uh, on your trailer, which I don't have on the uh, Vistabule, is a uh, insulated water tank. I mean, yeah, it won't stop, but it will slow down freezing in my opinion but yeah so that tank is is in the is in the departure angle so that little triangle yes. area right right at the back end of the trailer yep it's 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 all on that you know they, they made a special uh rotor motor tank that fits in there and uh perfectly and pretty much uses up that whole space except for you know enough to put the pump in there and 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 you know a plumbing and stuff uh, is also through there, but yeah, it's it's right in here. The only thing uh, between you and the tank is is like a metal panel that's at your feet, and then the other side of is is the tank. Very so good. It's pretty good. Pretty good bed. So if you're warm, the tank is warm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but if the tank is cold, you're cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For sleeping on a foam mattress. Yeah, it's a it's a four inch foam mattress. That, you know, we like to get some kind of a, a spring system for yeah, 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 or, so stick or, on springs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, well that's good. Air I mean, circulation under the, under the mattress too. So yeah. yeah. No insulation on the bottom of my trailer, and uh, it has a metal, you know, bottom, uh, and the um, the mat. There's a since I'm on a futon, I have a fold-down futon, which is a wood platform, and so look, going from the bottom to the top, you'd have the trailer floor, which is metal. Then you would get the futon floor, which is uh, I don't know, maybe quarter inch, half inch plywood, and then comes the uh -huh. mattress. So that helps a little bit, you know, not much, but it helps. And I, I'm never cold on the mattress. The mattress insulates me enough. But yeah, yeah, no, that sounds. That's a really nice, unique feature. I, I don't know if I see that on other 
Sure, yeah, that's you know. a signature. You're right. That's a signature uh, uh, vestibule uh, thing. The guy used to make futon, so he uh, he carried that over with him. He got good experience. Now your water that's 248 pounds, 31 uh, gallons, which is uh, quite a it's a that's a that's a pretty good load there of water. And uh, actually, you were mentioning that works to your advantage on the uh, on the tongue weight, right? Yeah, yeah. So you, by the time you load up that water tank and then fill out that rear storage area, it's probably a good 50 pounds or more off, off the tongue weight. Yeah, it's like a cantilever on, uh, effect, right? Like a seesaw. You've got weight on the back and it's lifting the front a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Not, not so much that it becomes you know, dangerous. I don't think you could load this trailer to where it'll be a sway issue. You, no, yeah, no, I don't so, think that. Yeah, no, I don't think that yeah. at all. Yeah, I mean, mine, I have, I get the same effect a little bit. My water tank is behind the wheels, so I do get a little cantilever effect, and so is the refrigerator. Now, I, I haven't measured it. I, I probably will, maybe this summer I'll measure it. But, you know, there's a little benefit from having a lot of weight behind the wheels. Uh, so that's that's a good thing. Um, yeah, it balances out pretty well. The, the fridge is up front of mine, so... Uh, it, you know, it's it balances out pretty well. It, it seems really stable on the on the freeway, even like 75, 80 miles an hour. I had mine so. up to 90 once, just for a short distance to yeah. try, and it's rock solid. I mean, you don't want to fool around at that speed, like changing lanes, but uh, you no, know, no, it's, it's sane, yeah. and uh, they they do track very well. I mean, mine tracks great. I'm I'm happy to hear yours is the same. That's very good. I have a 125 amp hour VMAX tank, uh, you know, solar AGM battery, and it's, it's actually performing pretty well. I mean, uh, by morning I'm down to, I've been down as low as uh, maybe 11.9 or something like that. It never really dips very low, uh, you know, and first crack at dawn the panels are charging everything up pretty fast, even in crappy weather. But I notice here, uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, the, your uh, your expedition, your off grid expedition 2.0. You got two batteries. Was that an option, or does it come that way? No, it comes with the two batteries standard, which was you know a big selling point for me because I, I wanted to do with a lot a lot with the you know solar and, and, and electrical power. So having that you know standard from the factory was a, a big selling point. Well, I'll tell you, I was really impressed with what you're doing with power charging those up with uh, 400 ma 400 watts of mounted power and you have well how I think you have some portable power yeah, some movable panels too right no it's actually 600 watts mounted on the on the trailer now so there's watts that's over the the front box where the refrigerator and batteries are okay and then there's there's uh, 300 watts that is directly on top of the uh, roof rack, and then there's another 100 watts panel that is on the floor side underneath the roof rack that slides out at the rear. Cool. In part, they were in part, so it, it kind of deploys out, and, and then it also will tilt. So all the panels will tilt. I can make for 50, I can make for 350 for uh, a good hour and a half, which is enough to, to cook you know, chicken or wheat loaf or uh, anything like that. Have you had it out in forest conditions yet? Uh, yeah, I uh, once up here at Lassen National Forest, we ended up in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it worked out pretty well. Not, nothing cold and snowy yet, but... Uh, um, A tree cover, you, you've operated okay under tree cover. Yeah, and that was before we had... Uh, I was pretty sure it was before I had the... It was just for a couple of days. Uh, it was before I had the, the solar panels mounted on the top, it was just with the, the uh, portable solar panel. That, that was kind of the thing that I really wanted to mount the things on top and just put as much on top as I could because I just I didn't want to babysit solar panels and move them around and, yeah. and then have to work, you know, put it away if I wanted to go out for a hike or something. And, yeah. I, I just wanted the panels on top and and be solid there, and not have to worry about you know moving or 
or put them away or something. Yeah, I do that. I have to put mine away. I, I move them. I mean, mine have been pretty good. Once I, I you know, with the 600 watts I've got now, I just throw them out. I don't stand them up or anything, and that's enough. It gets me through, unless yeah. I'm doing winter camping like I was just doing in a blizzard. Do they give you any kind of specifications on how long the water tank will keep water liquid? Is there any, you know, or how low you can go with that? Or uh... Uh, no, they don't. And they don't. I don't think they claim it to be, you know, winterproof or anything. They say four seasons, but you know, I think most RV manufacturers say four seasons and, and pretty loosely. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. Yeah, that's why we're having yeah, this. Yeah, but they fun. tell you they, they tell you pretty plainly that it needs to be winterized. So yeah, um, that that's the kind of. And you have a uh, electric water pump. I guess it's like a minute per gallon flow or something like that. Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, I think a standard RV. You know, I don't know what exactly what it is, but it does well. It's on demand and. Yeah, yeah, um, and of course, uh, while like, while we're on water, I mean, you have you have hot water in this trailer, which I'm really envious of, and you have a hot water shower, which is uh, <laughs> that's a luxury that uh, that is just hard to believe. I mean, it's really good. Now, until when I talked to you before, you mentioned that you know out in the desert where water is precious, you know, you managed to get off one, I guess one shower each. There were two of you there, one shower each, quick shower. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, you know, like a military shower. You just soap yourself down, wet yourself down with a, with a bucket yeah. of warm water and wash yourself up and then, you know, take a shower and rinse yourself off pretty much. Yeah, or, yeah. It's kind of like that. Well, that's great. It's, it's all uh, about the it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a nice thing to have out there. It really is. Oh, it's wonderful. I mean, I, I usually have to use wash. In my case, I use wash tubs, and I heat the water on the stove and put that in a wash tub. And uh, I've gotten it down pretty good. I managed to take a, uh, a pretty decent, you know, uh, bath uh, for with, I think, three quarts of water. So I was pretty pleased about that. But uh, you know, it's not the same. Gotta, if you've got to... The thing is with uh, with this Berkey filter, if you've got a stream nearby, a nice clear stream, you know, if you've got pretty much endless water, you know, with that, you yeah. can dump it in the tank and and filter with your and shower and all this stuff, and just it's it, it's pretty nice, you know. Uh, one uh, one difference, Todd, between your trailer and mine is um, when I connect to, uh, to to a shore power when I go to a campground and I plug my trailer in, I have a series of, uh, I have 120 uh, outlets. And um, the, uh, the power, AC power goes to AC, and then it powers DC, you know, it charges the battery and all that. The battery runs my lights, and it runs my water pump, uh, even when I'm plugged into shore power. But if I plug something into the AC outlet, it's only drawing from shore power. Now, I don't think this is a plus or a minus, I just think it's a difference. Your 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 electrical system is wired differently, right? Yeah, it it does not pass through. So it's only if you're plugging the shore power, it's only charging the batteries. That's all that does. So yeah, okay, and everything. Uh, and so everything on the trailer runs off of uh, off of the battery system, and uh, that that's just how it is. You know, that's uh, neither a plus or a minus. It's just how it is. Now, you know, to make up for the lack of two batteries, you know, I've got these Jackery products, and I use those quite a bit. I like them a lot, the portable power. So that fills my gap. I'm not, I'm not at all saying that that's equal to having another 120 amp hour battery. I'm not saying that at all. The second one, I'm saying that it's just uh, my, the way that I filled my gaps. Where is your battery located, Todd? So it's uh, in that front box on the, on the opposite. It's on the driver's side of that front box, so it's on the opposite side of the fridge. Uh-huh. Fridge is, fridge is on the passenger side and mm -hmm. and the fold down sink and, and uh, uh, stove is on the passenger side so your whole kitchen is there on the passenger side mm -hmm. and, and then your, your electronics and battery is over there on the, the driver's side. Okay, my and battery that, is uh, mounted under the floor. I mean, it's exposed to weather. You know, I mean, it's, it's in a metal container under the floor, but it's good. So, yeah, this is this thing is in the in the same box as the fridge. I imagine the fridge puts off a little heat while it's running. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that keeps the, the batteries. Uh, uh, I, 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 that's an interesting thing. I, I need to put a, you know, a temperature meter inside that box and, and kind of monitor and see what, Kind of temperatures are inside that box. Uh, you'll, uh... I actually have some insulation company coming to insulate those those boxes, that front box and the the two side boxes that that house the uh, fold out sink and then the 
the outdoor sink. Mm-hmm. What, what are you going to do, like pink foam or something? Or? Yeah, it's like a, it's it's a thick foam with a adhesive back. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to put that on the, the doors and the walls of those boxes. Try to insulate them as much as I can. Yeah. Well, in my case, the, I, when I went out, I brought separate water containers. I drained my water tank. I drained the pump. Uh, I, you know, all that was drained. I didn't have to worry about anything freezing because I wasn't using the sink. I was using, you know, uh, water bottles to uh, to cope with that. I figured if they freeze, it's not going to be a big problem. So, you know, I could do something. Right. And I could put them yeah. out in the sun, you know, in the daytime when I had warmer sun, I could stick them out there to melt them. So it's... Uh, yeah, I'm sure that's how uh, most people are doing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's how I would, I would have to do it right now because my stuff would freeze, you know. So I, I need, I would need to winterize the trailer and... And these water bottles. I mean, yeah. I'd have to empty the tank because because the the water faucet and the shower would freeze. Yeah, the tank would be okay, but all that all that stuff on the outside would freeze. So yeah, yeah, you know, you don't want to start going with electrical tape and all that. You know, you, there's a lot you could do, but yeah, you know, how crazy can you go? And how often do you do it? I only go on a couple of winter trips a year. So I'm willing to make do with uh, with what I've got. You, the power in your trailer. Um, how, how much power do you have in your trailer? Like, you know, outlets and things? Uh, I'm, I'm just reading here off your list that you sent me. And uh, two USB-Cs, I think. Uh, yeah. That's good. That's really good. I like that. Uh, two USB plugs in the cabin and one USB on the fridge. Uh, uh-huh. That's not enough electric for me, Todd. I, I would need uh, a lot more. Well, I have no USB, but I do have a lot of 12 volt outlets all over the place. Um, do you, you don't have 12 volt outlets, right? Yeah, there, there is uh, uh, not, no 12 volts, but 120 volt outlets. Yeah. Inside the cabin. Okay. Uh, two of those, and then and then the the four USB plugs inside the cabin. Okay, yeah, so you could plug yeah. anything into the uh, 120 volt, and you could have uh, 12 volt or whatever you wanted there, so that's plenty. Do you know how many amps they can handle? Oh, well, the, the 120 volt is uh, 15 amps AC, so, I mean, that, that's, I mean, you could do a lot on DC. Yeah, I think that, I actually. have 15 amp also, and uh, do you have circuit breakers or fuses? There's a circuit breaker, but I, I, I gotta change that over to a, a fuse. Mm hmm. Because when I when I run that toaster oven, uh, I have to be careful with what I'm doing you're with that. Because <laughs> that. <laughs> when you're running, when you're roasting a couple of chickens, a couple of corn <laughs> hens, and you use your electric shaver, the electric shaver blows the fuse. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen anybody roast Cornish hens in an RV, okay? I'm just telling you, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good. Uh, it was pretty tasty, that's for sure. It turned out pretty good. I was looking envious. I'm, I have a 35-quart uh, a uh, refrigerator, and you're using a 50-quart refrigerator, which is nice and big. A Dometic, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really nice. So you can use that just as all fridge or all freezer, or you can split it up into, into two zones, which I usually do. I, I like, like it. Be able, yeah, I like to be able to freeze stuff, have some frozen meats, uh have some frozen ice cubes and yeah and then, and then the rest of the space for for the little rich, vanilla ice so. cream for those cookies you're baking i mine is just refrigeration that's one thing i don't have is i don't have ice when i'm out camping and then i uh one thing that we are in 100 uh, percent total agreement on is the propex heater the hs 2000 is uh just a fantastic heater now you mentioned that your propex hs 2000 is mounted on top of your uh your your trailer right yeah, so it's uh, uh, on top, underneath the roof rack. So uh, there's a little box that they have it mounted in up there. The newer model has it uh, uh, mounted in the side with the with the outdoor shower in that box, mm, which okay. is kind of a, kind of a big improvement because that keep, kind of keeps that uh, water inside that box more than yeah, yeah, yeah. That it probably so. does. Yes, I agree. It would. Uh, well, I'll tell you it, something. It, the Propex is such an efficient heater. When it's running, you can put your hand on top of it. I mean, and not get burned. I mean, you'll feel heat, but a few seconds after it shuts off, it, you can touch it. You know, it's like just it's so efficient at carrying the heat into the uh, into the trailer. Now, how is it? How is the ducting? How does that work on yours? Where does the ducting come down from the roof? So 
that's uh, coming down in through that top storage box by the foot compartments, and then, and then actually, uh, actually on the lower model, it's like that. It's just coming down straight through the roof. They got vents, one on the left side, there's a, the intake, and then on the right side, I think, is the output. So you have a flush-mounted uh, heat register there? Is that what it is? Yeah, on the panel, there's, there's that control panel, your, your Propex control panel, and then on the roof, there's the two vents. One, you know, okay. intake on one side, and, the, and then and on top of the roof, I mean, on, on your ceiling on the inside is your, is your out intake and output mm -hmm. for your heat. And then on the roof, on the outside, you can, you can see the, the piping, you know, the, the exhaust pipe, mm -hmm. the hot exhaust that's coming out, and then the, the intake is on the other side, you know, away from the, the exhaust. Was, uh, the doors are towards, uh, are on the, the front side towards the tongue. Okay. And, and the, that's where your head is at, is by the door. Okay. And then uh, your feet are down towards the back of the trailer by the, the water tank, which is in the the, uh, the triangle area, the departure angle. Okay. So the, the rear storage area, on the other side of that rear storage area is where the inside storage area is at. The interior of the trailer, is it metal or is it uh, fiberglass? What is the actual interior interior material? So it's um, it's it's uh, powder-coated aluminum. Uh-huh. Uh, it's riveted, you know, in place, kind of, mm -hmm. I guess, I guess more airstream like. I don't know. The construction is airstream like. Okay. So it's it's aluminum frame and it's all aluminum riveted to aluminum. Okay. But it's a it's a really nice finish. It's a really durable, shiny white finish, and and uh, it just gives really open. You know, it makes it look bigger, I guess, and then... Yeah, no, the white it, color makes it look enormous in there. It's very nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. With that material now, uh, acoustically, like I'm an audiophile. I love music. I love sound. And I had to put soundproofing all around my apartment because it would, like, you know, make echoing. How is the sound quality when you're in there if you're listening to music? Uh, it's good. I mean, I, I don't really notice anything objectionable about it. I think it's... Uh, uh, I really haven't, I think, played a lot of music inside there to, to test that out, yeah, I guess to say. Yeah, okay, well, when you start winter camping, you'll be playing more music, I guarantee you. You can hear a difference when I have the uh, the shade, the front glass shade. That's a big reflective piece, the front. And uh, I can hear a slight difference when I have that up and down, you know. The, the window is something I'm really jealous of, actually, you know. <laughs> of course, I have the enormous front window, which is not insulated glass. That's a uh, single wall glass and single pane glass. And um, the way that I have to insulate in cold weather, and it's very noticeable, I have to pull down the shade. I have a skylight shade for that. And uh, that does, the shade is about an inch thick. Uh, it's just air cells in there. What a difference that makes. I mean, it just, uh, you can feel it. If you lay under the window in the winter and you open that shade, you will feel cold air pouring in. Now, so that's, you know, and the view is everything. I mean, that's why really why I bought that trailer so I could look out at nature. Um, there are times of the year I can just stargaze and I can, you know, just look out and, you know, at night and daytime and just enjoy what's going on. Now I also yeah. have side windows. I have two windows on each side. I have a porthole window and I have a other window that opens with a kickstand. So I get very, very good airflow there. It's been uh, amazingly well, especially combined with the fan up on top, the max fan or whatever that is. But the other thing I have is I have a window in the back, which I can see all the way through the trailer when I'm driving. I can see out the back side, which, you know, it's... um. It's a nice to have, you know, if you're changing lanes or something, but it's certainly not necessary at all. But what I like about that setup is I have windows on all four sides and I can see out of all four sides, which is the first thing I do when I get up in the morning. And, uh, you know, you never know what you're going to see out there. And it's, you know, you sit, catch wildlife or, you know, or, or whatever. It's always a, a nice thing. Now, your window setup, you've got two side windows, right? They slide open? Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Okay. It's just uh, your standard RV door, you know, it's, yeah. I think the, the doors I have are something they buy, you know, a standard RV door they buy off the market. But now they, um, they've they changed that up and they're making their own doors on the newer models, uh, which I wish 
wish I had, but you know. Uh, uh, you know, no, it's their first year. Is it their first year? I don't want to be the first pioneer, you know, taking the arrows in the back, you know? Yeah, you know, they, they, that's one of the nice things about the off grid is they're, they're, they're keeping the same design, but they're, you know, improving and iterating on it each year. And, well, that's a good and, thing. Uh, I mean, that's, a, that's, like that's that. the sign of a good maker, you know. I mean, some of these commercial, you know, and, and the reason why I wanted to have these call with you is, um, you know, now with the demand for RVs, you know, there's a lot of new makers out there. There are no name makers who are, don't have a lot of experience. And, uh, Experience is very important, uh, you know, for water leaks and for structure and failures. Uh, you want somebody, in my opinion, who has uh, some time under their belt making trailers. So that's uh, yeah, yeah. You don't want to jump that. on any old thing. Uh, if you hear some horror stories uh, uh, from people, but uh, things that fail. So that's good. Um, and you said the ventilation's really good with the uh, with the max fan up on top. You turn that on and you get a good wind blowing through there. So that's uh, yeah, that's just really overkill. I think actually what it does for the <laughs> you know it, you can get some serious slow through there. It, it gets loud obviously, but uh, even at the lower speeds, it's it's plenty enough. Yeah, I keep mine in the lowest speed a lot of times, and it, uh, it's very Yeah, quiet. that's what I'm saying. It's just, it'll do way more than what you need or what you want. So. Yeah, well, I go out in very hot weather, and I take out uh, a little 12-volt box fan. It just works great. I mean, it's just, and you have 120, so you could bring any fan you want if you need additional cooling. How hot have you had it out in, Todd? So the, the, the weekend, we brought it, bought it home and uh, picked it up and brought it home. It was... I think 110 degrees there in uh, Lake Havasu. So, uh, so, you know, we booked it out there, and the, the first night we spent was in, in Alabama Hills mm -hmm. here in California. Yeah, it was it was hot there. It was pretty warm. Uh, and that first night, I, I, I you know it was first night in it, and I had kind of trouble sleeping, so I just got out and. And uh, sat outside for a while and looked at the stars and yeah, <laughs> that was that was actually a really nice thing, you know, because I <laughs> I saw some things I never would have saw, you know. But uh, yeah, uh, no, yeah, it's it obviously doesn't have air conditioning, so you just rely on that fan. So you, if if you're in like a humid East Coast environment, it's gonna be what it is. Yeah, no, a couple of days a year, I have to bring a second fan. Uh, you know, I got the Max fan, but I bring a seven f second fan. And it's really great because in the hot daytime, if I'm sitting under a canopy, I could have that fan with a solar panel. I just throw a solar panel on there, and it's just uh, free energy, you know? It's pretty good. So it's uh, it's a nice setup. And, I, you know, and at night if I can't sleep, I just put that fan on if it's hot and humid here, which it does get. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I usually have to turn it off after an hour, but... Uh, it's a, it's a good thing. I was not one for air conditioning. I didn't want the, you know, I couldn't use it most of the places I go anyway because I don't have the uh, the amperage. And uh, I'm just very happy with a fan. I don't, use a, I don't use air conditioning at home. I use a fan. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I just can't see doing that. Something like that. It's, the fan is going to work or it's, I don't know. That's that's enough for me. I'm not gonna. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, any uh, tables built in on yours, or uh, you know, work areas or tables? Uh, for instance, I have two door tables, and uh, I have a center table that I can put in, and I have a pretty big counter space in the kitchen, and uh, and that that works out pretty well for me. The kitchen, you know, I have a, what I would consider a fully functional kitchen uh, with counter space. I've had three people working in my kitchen at once. And uh, I'm always happy about that if somebody else wants to help me. And uh, two people can work back there. One could be slicing and dicing. Uh, one could be doing dishes. And one could be uh, on the stove in the middle. You know, it's crowded, but, you know, you can do it. Especially two people can work no problem. Yeah, so that's um, something on my model. It's, it's uh, the exhibition. It's, <clears throat> you kind of you kind of need a, a separate table to set up to have something to work off from mm -hmm. the, the, you can use the, the this fold down stove as you know the uh, fold down um, glass tops for the sink you can use that if you're just using the stove or vice versa and you can use the fender but there's no real like, work table uh, on the expedition now on the pando, on the off-grid pando, it's more like a traditional period op. That's got the, a nice rear 
work uh, much like yours. Mm -hmm. uh, but on mine, you, you pretty much you, you kind of need a, a separate table to set up. And well, I bring four tables work anyway. Off. I bring two small tables and two large tables, and I just use them for everything. I mean, I use them all over the place, and. Uh, and they work out quite well, uh, you know. In addition to the space that I've got, why why did you decide on the uh, on the uh, on the trailer you did, like the expedition over the Pando? Was there some uh, deciding factor that you felt was important? Well, the, yeah, the Pando is actually is, is a lot heavier. It's like twenty three hundred pounds mm -hmm. dry, I think. Uh huh. Uh, and it, uh, yeah, that that weight. The, the one, one last thing about the Pando is you can actually have two refrigerators with that, come standard with one, and then you can have the other separate up front one. Wow. Uh, so if you're really a chef, I think, and, and you know, you want the Pando, you know. Yeah. <laughs> if you're running a cooking show, yes, that's a good idea. Yeah, you know, you can really go to town with that thing. <laughs> I'll have to take. I didn't look at that. I'll have to look at the Pando. That's the yeah. uh, the off grid Pando. I'll have to look that up. Yeah. Right, good. Good. <laughs> um, well, that's more of a direct comparison to yours, actually, uh, in terms of, of layout. You know. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, no, I actually like the the kitchen on the side, that fold down kitchen, and 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 the, the refrigerator being on the side. Yeah. Underneath. Underneath the awning, it really works out well. I mean, no, you're I think it's, um, I, you know, they thought outside the box on that trailer, and you just have to adapt to their thinking. And I think once you, you know, I'm, I'm positive that once you get used to the look of it or whatever, that you'll it'll, you'll be happy with it. I mean, you have to look at the positive side. You have room underneath the stove. You can put a table under there or anything you want. You know, folding table, whatever. You have a lot of flexibility. So I was uh, pretty yeah. impressed when I looked at it. The way the swing down stove is pretty impressive. Uh, it's, it's a really. They really. They just said, let's let's rethink this whole thing. You know, <laughs> they, uh, they they put some they, thought they, into it. They they maximize the footprint. I think as far as what how much you can store there and and, uh, and do with that footprint. I think it's. They did a pretty well, a pretty good job with the design as far as that goes. Yeah. Have you had it out in heavy rain? Yeah, yeah. We we've had it in rain. Uh, the first trip home, we we spent a night. Uh, oh gosh, what was the name of that? I'd have to look up the campgrounds we stayed in, but it it rained and and hailed and uh, yeah, it was quite a mess, but. Uh, Hell up nice, yeah. And then we had a couple nights of rain uh, down at Toronto Pinnacles the first uh, two days that it rained all day and all day and all night. You're the only guy I know who gets rain in the desert. Maybe it's more common than I'm expecting, but uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it rains there, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. And so the the um, the rain reason I'm asking is the awning worked out really well? Yes, yes. That's, uh, it's to me it's a, integral part of the trailer I can't imagine not having it it really is and I mean it's quite an awning and I was really impressed when I saw in your video how it held up under heavy duty wind I mean you basically have to nail it to the ground right and it, you know which is typical you know uh, yeah it just really looked very weather worthy and created a, a great working environment there so it was a great space so it looked pretty damn good to me uh, yeah it's it's built like a really well tent Real, well built tent, you know, so the sidewalls, uh, it all lashes down really, really well, like a, like you, a really well built tent. Yeah. So, and when, when it acts kind of the same. What is the tent fabric made out of? Is that canvas or is it uh, nylon? It's a nylon, uh, non stip nylon, so it's, okay. and it's real heavy. It's real heavy. It's heavy. Heavy gauge stuff. Yeah, it looks yeah. like canvas. It doesn't look like your typical lightweight, you know, ripstop fly or anything. You know, it looks like a lot more substantial. The wall kit is really heavy. Yeah, the wall kit is really heavy gauge stuff. I, I don't think it's canvas. I think it's a non-stick nylon. Mm -hmm. like, what did that wall non kit cost, if you don't mind me asking? That was a four hundred dollar option. Mm -hmm. I, okay. I originally ordered that. I ordered the trailer without it, and then. Uh, I got to thinking and I said, you know, I really think that might be a good thing to have one day. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, and I called them back and had them, asked them to edit on, so yeah. they, they did that no problem. And, uh, okay, good. 
Uh, do you know what the wait time is for these trailers now? It was three months at, at the time. I, I think they're, they're a little bit longer than that now, probably closer to five months of the pandemic, but mm-hmm. I, I would expect that to pick back up. They're uh, pretty solid with the ability to ramp up to... Uh, they were bought by a larger company, so it's a, a consortium now. So mm-hmm. they, have, they have the resources to ramp up to demand I think pretty well you uh, went to their shop when you picked up your trailer uh, no I was one of the ambassadors in, in Lake Havasu uh, uh, Arizona where oh. I picked it up oh they, they delivered it to them yep so it went went from uh, Canada all the way to Lake Havasu and I had to go down there to pick it up okay okay and how was the registration on a Canadian trailer in the U.S.? So, uh, I, I went to the DMV, uh, they gave me paperwork beforehand, before I picked it up. Mm-hmm. I went to the DMV and got a, like a temporary, uh, permit to, to bring it home. And then, uh, and then I had to take it into the DMV for, uh, inspection and then they gave me the registration there. Is, but, um, but, is a breakaway, um, break required in California? Um, I don't, I'm not sure if the breakaway thing is, but I know the electric brakes are over a certain weight, and this was over that weight, so. Yeah, no, I'm uh, happy to see you have a breakaway. I don't have a breakaway on mine, but, um, I, I, I probably is something I ought to think about, you know. I, uh, I, uh, I check, <laughs> I check, every time I stop, I check the hitch. Every time I stop, I check the chains. I, uh. I, I load the trailer up and get it ready. I pull it out in the street. I look at it. Then I drive a few miles and I look at it again. I'm always uh, careful, but nothing beats having uh, a backup system, which is uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I guess they, you know, they're going to save your trailer, maybe. But uh, uh, I'm more worried about. I, I think the odds are pretty low, you know. But yeah, I, I'm not sure how much those breakaway systems cost. It seems like a pretty simple little, little unit and a uh, little. It's just a cable that connects to it so yeah it might be a pretty pretty easy retrofit yeah 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 they uh yeah it's just a battery system there to uh activate the thing if if you pull a pin it activates it there was the the capability and and the the you know amount of storage and the capabilities it had with the double batteries and the refrigerator already there and the stove and, and the shower and all that already there ready to go yep but, but then it wasn't, also it wasn't, you know, overly customized, you know. It was kind of a blank piece of paper after that for you to fix up and, uh, and make your own. Once you've got it, like when you really customize it and make it yours, that is, that's where it really uh, comes into play. I mean, I spent, you know, a year or more working on mine and it's never going to be done. I'm always tweaking and making changes and I, you know, I'm always buying different stuff and putting in new things. So I just love it. I, I have a real blast with my art. It's my most fun toy. I have to say my trailer is my most fun toy. I do want to talk to you about your channel. Do you plan on growing your channel? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm working on a video now about the, the awning actually, you know, it had a little tear in it from the uh, playa out there at the Black Rock Desert and all the wind out there. Uh, I made a repair on that, so I want to do a, a Okay, video great. On so, this is what I'm thinking of doing, Todd, is this spreadsheet. I'm going to put this in a PDF. That's why I've been sending it to you. And what I want to do is in the video, I'm going to say, look, we put this spreadsheet together. If you, you know, it's hard to follow in this video. If you'd like a copy of it, send an email. First of all, if you'd like a copy, subscribe to Todd's channel and my channel. And when we see you're subscribed, just send us an email with your return email address, and we'll send you the PDF and my hope is that that would boost your subscribers well you know we don't know we might get a hundred views on this or we might get a thousand who knows well you know I, I'm guessing that's what's gonna happen I really appreciate the, the effort I think you're gonna have a lot of fun and why not fast track that? I'll of course mention you know we'll, we'll I'll flash up your channel so what I wanted to ask is I could do it at your email address. We could say, this is my email address. You subscribe to my channel and Cosmos channel, and, uh, and I'll mail you this. Just send me an email with, uh, 
subscribe in the header, you know, in the, in the subject. And when you get those things, you just respond and shoot out the uh, the PDF. Come on, now I'm all for it. Okay, great, great. We'll try it. Is there any? You know, I think they said there's nothing different you would do, and you're pretty happy with the model. So uh, I think we're done. I would buy the same trailer with the normal. Ladies, a lot of dust. It is cold. Yeah, it's cold.